well, as I said earlier, Tommy and I were buddies because I was in a band, I play rock and roll, he played rock and roll, and he literally called me up one day and he's like, dude, you're not gonna believe this. This guy in my bar wants to make a movie about me and my tour, one man band tour across America, and do you wanna make it? Because at the time I had just started getting into, I was in a band and I started, I was like, I can make my own music video, why not? It's not hard, right? <laughs> So, uh, so I made a couple of music videos and short films, and I thought, well, shoot, this will give me some great experience. You know, I didn't have enough money to go to film school, so I was like, this is going to be a great experience. Go across the a country and film this guy. You know, my buddy. And as you saw, it just, it just uh, totally took a left turn. It was supposed to be a tour documentary, and then I thought, this will be fun, no big deal. This is just going to be for Tommy and his, you know, promotional material or whatever. It'll be like a, a little short music video, and then of course. My girlfriend just called me up and told me she's pregnant. And I'm thinking, now we got a movie. This is great. And, uh, and so it became something else entirely. I became incredibly disciplined and really dedicated to it and really wanted to see it through no matter what happened. So after the tour, which was when we were supposed to stop filming, even though all the money ran out, I kept filming him for another year and a half. And then I had 300 hours of footage. And um, going on to your, to your next question, 300 hours of footage. <sighs> Yeah, you know, it's sort of, it, that's why it took me many, many, many years to get through it. I think we had made about 20 different versions of this film, no lie, um, because, you know, w when you say sex, drugs, and rock and roll, it sounds really exciting, like, oh, let's make a rock and roll film, you know, about this guy and, and all his music and rock and roll, and then you do a, you know, 90-minute film, and it's the same show, it's the same thing, and it's like, you know, what what we, it's exciting and it, it, to do rock and roll, but the thing that everyone in this room can relate to is family, is parents, is, is, is wanting that approval from your, no matter how good or bad you had it, I think everybody wants that approval from their parents or you just, you have that connect, everyone's, everyone's got it. And so it became to me this story, as I've said before, it became the story that started off very spinal tap and this guy picking his nose across America and you know, farting and stuff and, and, and uh, it became, you know, it started off spinal tap and it became very Shakespeare. So over time, it's sort of we, we try to incorporate these elements of rock and roll, but also these elements that everybody can relate to. You know, nobody wants to watch a 90 minute, if you're not super famous, you know, if you're not kissed or something, it's like you don't want to watch a concert movie about, about this guy. You want to watch, what can I relate to? You know, it's like to me, that's what art's about. You put people in these situations, and uh, as they say, you put them up in a tree and you throw rocks at them and you see what happens and what decisions they make. And would you make the same decision? Maybe, maybe not. But but that's what we tried to do. We really tried to balance these these elements in the film. Did I answer everything? What was the third question? What was the third question? What did you, what did you think about it? Was a pretty good uh, what did Tommy? <laughs> um, you know, I, I don't think the rest of the family seen it. Again, we could have, speaking of, we could have made a film just about his family. Because as you saw, his, his brother just got out of jail. And Julie, the girl who was just, we just heard the voice, the only reason we just had a voice over her was because she was under house arrest. When we, when we were gonna interview her, she had a, a gambling addiction and she was put in jail by her brother because she stole her sister-in-law's identity, racked up $50,000 in credit card debt. So she was put in jail, she was out of jail for house arrest. And we were thinking like, how do we get footage of her we couldn't go to the house and she was in Wisconsin and we we're like, we could send her a camera, but I don't know if we get it back. So, so we just did a phone interview. Anyway, and then Gene and like everybody and, and, and Tommy, the house that they went to uh, when in the motorcycle ride, when he and his brother, they actually went to a house that they used to live in. And Tommy started having all these flashbacks about another brother that he thinks abused him severely and and I mean we could just make an entire film about the family so we're not super keen on like hey family come and you know come to a screening um not sure what the dad's gonna think about the video you know about the movie um so I don't really know Tommy in particular his we showed him an early version of the movie and he hated it and um and actually for a while there he was he he, he was very upset, and I don't know, maybe that inspired him to go to film school, because maybe he thought he wanted to make a version of it. I don't know, but he couldn't stand it. But you know, as I'm sure everyone could relate, if, if everyone had a movie made about their life and had a camera that followed them around and showed every little thing that they did, 
because the most interesting things about us is our humanity and our flaws. You know, it's not the cool things that we want everyone to see, it's our flaws, and nobody really wants a movie made about them, you know? So uh, Tommy hated it at first, and I think after he saw it, we, I think we had a version that was much more humane, you know, to him, not as much nose picking. Um, <laughs> we scale down the nose picking, but uh, eventually, I think he actually ended up, last week we had a premiere in Portland, and he ended up coming to the premiere and um, got up with us and did a Q&A, and mm-hmm. most of the questions were actually directed towards him, and then he got up and actually did a set of songs. He hasn't played in a long time, and he got up and he did a set of songs, so he's obviously come around, and, and I think he's had a little distance from the person that he was in that film. He's really grown, he's really a dedicated dad, and so I think he can look at it with some perspective. So he looks at it now, he actually said a really cool thing at the premiere, and he said, you know, how many of us have a record of the time, you know, we all fucked up, right? We all had that time in our life when you were crazy doing whatever, and we've all, you know, become the people that we are now, and how many of us have a record of that era (laughs) that we get to look back on and say, remember that time that I did the biggest rail of all time? which, by the way, that was take two, in case anyone was wondering. Um, so yeah, so now he likes it. But at the time, when he first saw it, he was not very happy with me. So. Uh, yeah, given all the number of hours that you shot, the time that you spent with him, during a very challenging period of his life, um, did you ever feel that you ended up being affecting him uh, by doing this, becoming part of the character? I mean, the whole thing of, even the, the sense of filming him giving him more confidence in his act because he's being filmed. You know, that's that's a good question. It's it's sort of that when something's watched, you know, does it does it change behavior? And and there was there's some ama- again, there's there's so much good stuff in the film and Tommy had said that he really wouldn't have done the tour if if he hadn't known that there was gonna be someone following him. And there was one quote from his girlfriend Mel who had said that, like, I don't think Tommy would have had this baby if there hadn't been a crew following. You know, so there, I mean, but these are incendiary things, you know, that people said. I think the thing to me that, that I found most interesting was, was that Tommy and I were friends. You know, we, we really started off before the tour, we were pals. I mean, I, we'd hang out and, and, and stay up all night and yap about things, about life and music and whatever. And so when we went on the tour, I think I wrestled a little bit with feeling kind of manipulative because when you see him talking to the camera, he's really talking to me, you know, and we were friends. And and so it's sort of, it felt almost like, I mean, he's not stupid, he's a really smart guy. He knew there was a camera that was running, you know? So it, it was interesting. I, I often wonder if, would I have gotten as honest a portrayal? Would I have gotten as deep and, and honest a, a reflection on his life and the things that he did if we hadn't been friends, if I had been a stranger or just somebody who kind of showed up, would he have been as as deep as he was? I'm glad he was because I think what happened was really authentic and honest. But but that's the thing I wonder I wonder about the most because we were friends and he's talking to a friend. He's not just talking to a camera. Hey, thank hey, thank you again, you guys, so much for coming out. I appreciate it. And thank you to Blue Whiskey and all the volunteers. Thank you.